4.26 says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Right. Okay. So, we're going to talk about anger, being angry today. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right. So, first of all, the word angry in Greek is ords jizo, which means to provoke, to enrage, and to become exasperated. Amen. My question is it okay to be angry? Yes. Okay. And is anger a sin? No. Okay, so I want to look up a couple of scriptures, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look them up. You can look them up with me. First one I want to point out to you is in found in Mark chapter three. Mark chapter three. If you would turn that with me, I'm gonna read it. But Mark chapter three. I'm gonna read one through five. Y'all got it? Okay. And he entered again into the synagogue. This is Jesus. He entered into the synagogue. And there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? To save a life or to kill? Good question. Is it okay to do evil on Sunday? Or to kill? Or is it is it good to do good on Sunday? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as the other. I thought that was interesting that I found that Jesus gets angry. And it was okay to be angry, but you notice what he did? He did something a lot of us should never do to one another. That angry look. <laughs> you ever do that to your spouse? That angry look. The kids would say, that look? Mom. That look. Now, Jesus, I would never want Jesus to look at me that way. <laughs> Could you imagine Jesus looking at you like he's angry? Oh. You've done something awful wrong when Jesus says that to you. Because mm -hmm. Jesus loves people. He's compassionate. But he was compassionate on who? The withered man. The right. man with the withered hand. It was time for this man to be healed. And there's a bunch of religious people saying, oh, that's that's not in our denomination. We can't do it. <laughs> I thought that was very, very interesting how Jesus can get mad. Now, I want to give you another scripture. Now, there were several, actually, that I looked up. But my other one, this one's my favorite one. And this was found in all four of the Gospels. But in the book, Gospel of John, chapter 2. Y'all turn to John, chapter 2. Like I say, this one's a little bit different, this lesson, because I, I really, really got into it, I guess is what you say. Okay, John chapter 2, verse 13. It says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that had sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers of this money city. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the money changers and threw over the tables. And he said unto them that sold the doves, Take these things hence. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Now, you'll notice, I want to point out a couple things about Jesus here. I believe he was angry. But he sat down and he wove a rope, a whip. He took the time to sit down and we will. That means he didn't. I've seen it. I've seen it in the in the in the movie pictures where Jesus cast out the money changers. He's angry. He's screaming. He's still in tables. No, he didn't do that. He didn't yell. Didn't scream. Because I'm telling you something right now, and I learned this as being a supervisor at work. If you raise your voice, you've lost the battle. That's true. You have lost the battle. I can't see Jesus ever raising his voice. Why, why do you need to raise your voice? Can they hear you any better when you scream? That's, that's, that's being angry and getting angry. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and losing your temper. I think the difference between being angry and there's a difference between being angry and losing your temper. You know? Okay. So I typically want to point out that. It also says, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Uh, I, 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 I thought it was pretty funny about, y'all know Phyllis Diller? Yes. Right. She, you know, she had, she had a husband named Fang. 
F A N G? Yeah, Fang. Her husband was named Fang. You know? And she said, uh, uh, don't don't uh, don't ever go to bed mad. Fight until morning. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Uh, okay, so here we have a couple more words we probably should look at. The word sin there. And you're going to find, if you start studying your Bible like I do, and looking up words, you're going to find sin has many, many different uh, uh, Greek words. That, that, and they just translated sin. This one is hamartano, which means to miss the mark, to err, to offend, and to trespass against someone. Okay. So, it says be angry, but don't stomp on people. Right? That's what trespassing is. Good morning. All right. Good morning, then. How you doing? Okay. So it's okay to be angry, but we're not supposed to sin. So we, if we if we offend someone or if we stomp on, them, sometimes we get angry. We really want to stomp on somebody. Yeah. I mean, really, that's the way we feel sometimes. I know I do. I'm just telling you how I feel. Can you please repeat that? The, the word for sin? Well, ham, hamartano. H-A-M-A-R-T-A-N-O. And that's just one, like I said, one of the definitions from Greek that means sin. This one actually means to miss the mark, to err, to offend, and to trespass. So one has like 26 letters and the other has like three. <laughs> yeah. And the other one's probably harder to say. You know? <laughs> Don't go to bed mad. And it says do not let wrath, the sun go down on your wrath. Now, two different words. We have anger, right? To provoke, enrage, to become exasperated. And then with the word wrath, paro, paro gismos, which means rage and anger. That, that's the problem. Rage <coughs> and anger. See, God only has the right to do that. We, we, do, we do that and it ruins our, own, our whole lives. You get, you get wrathful against your children, against your co-workers. Like I say, raising your voice, all it's going to do is make you lose. That's right. Jesus didn't raise his voice in these situations. The first time he gave him an angry look. It's okay to look at somebody like you don't mind. <laughs> it is. It's okay to do that. But it's not okay to go stop them. Trespass. Sin. You become the sinner when you trespass them. Because they're the sinner. True. Jesus looked at them like, you guys shouldn't be doing this. You know? You're right. You just shouldn't be doing it. Especially in the house of God, you shouldn't be doing this. Looking down on me because I'm going to heal somebody on your Sabbath day. Yeah. You know? Man got healed. Amen. Amen. Okay. Next verse. And we're, we're, we're at Ephesians chapter 4. We just read 26, which was be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down on the ground. Neither give place to the devil. I learned a whole lot about reading when I read that scripture and I looked all those words up. Neither give place to the devil. This is something we've all been guilty of. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, because the word place is topos. No, that means opportunity of room or a quarter. A quarter, like where somebody lives at. Okay? And the other word, gia, is uh, denoni, which means to yield and, and give grant. And the devil is the false accuser, the diabolos. So in a nutshell... If you're going to be angry, get angry at the devil. <laughs> it's okay to be angry as long as it does not cause us to sin and cause an offense to others. Do not remain angry. And finally, we must quit listening to any false accusers. The devil is a false accuser accusing your brother of something, and that's what's got you angry because you're angry at your brother because he's, the devil's telling you to be angry at him. Don't give him place. Don't let him in. Amen. Realize that's happening to you. Amen. We give the devil credit. Why? Yeah. And he's just wanting you to, to blow your cool. He wants you to yell at your kids. You don't have to yell at your kids. They don't hear any better when you yell at them. That's true. Most of the time they just shut up. That's right. Okay. So finally, we must quit listening to any false uh, accusations or condemnation of the enemy that he throws our way. If you err or sin, do not let the enemy in your room. 
cast it upon the Lord our Savior. And I find that's going to that's help me. Every time I get upset, I'm going to remember this scripture. I'm not going to let him in, make me all upset. Why am I upset? Is it getting upset going to do you any good? It doesn't do anything. It yeah, it makes your blood pressure go up. It makes you get <laughs> ulcers. And, you know. That's right. So this is really, really good advice from the Lord, from the, from the Bible, that it's okay to be angry. Jesus proved it to us. I showed you two scriptures. But it's not okay to be angry and hurt somebody. It's not okay to be angry and be exasperated. Exasperated means you, you know, you've, you've been there. I've been there. Okay. All right, so let's go to the next verse. Verse 28. Let him that steal, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he that he may give to him that need. All right, so first of all, they told us. Now, this is what I want to write. Now, we, you know, we just told about the devil. Right. Now, let's address some of the accusations that can be made against you. Okay? Accusations that can make, be made against you. True or not true? Have you ever stolen anything? <coughs> okay? <coughs> you know, in so many ways, we can steal. Yeah. We yeah. can steal from our employers. Some people steal from the IRS. Possibly when you're a child, you stole... I did. I'm forgiven for it. I don't steal anymore, so I'm going by the scripture, or I'd probably be in jail, just like a lot of other people that keep on stealing. Uh, but what about tithes? You know? Or offerings? Or helps? You know, we're stealing when we, we're supposed to help when we don't. I felt really bad because I went here this week. Hope y'all know that. Did I say Okay, so the godly advice is to steal no more, go to work, and when we go to work, we're supposed to work at doing good things, and in your abundance, you're supposed to help others. Amen. It's just simple, very, very simple. Okay, to steal, and I like these words in Greek, klepto. <laughs> klepto means to filch, commit theft, right? Then we have two words he used, labor and working, right? Because he said... Let him labor working with his hands. So there, that's the two different words. The word labor is kopiao, which means to work hard, to toil. Working is your occupation, your erga zomei, your commitment to ministry. Okay? Be committed to doing good. Good is agathos, which means well and beneficial. Not just for yourself but for to help others in need. And that word need is charia, which means lack, needful, uh, and to have, to hold. Okay. Next scripture. Mm -hmm. These are all really fun. Now, Joyce, would you pass out, beware the tongue. Amen. See, all these go together, these scriptures that Paul got, got in this portion of Ephesians, and they all speak to me and I should speak to you too. It says in verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that you may minister grace to the hearers. I like my version better. Yeah, read it, please. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let every, everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Amen. Okay, so let's discuss this a little bit. Amen. Corrupt communication. What is corrupt communication? First of all, the word corrupt is, is sapros, and it means rotten and putrid, worthless, bad, no longer fit for use. And communication is your logos. We have to guard our mouths and let no rotten words proceed out of them. That's right. Now, as I've been studying the Word of God, I've been studying the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. That's going to be the next thing we teach after we finish Ephesians. The 
Word of God is so powerful that it spoke everything into existence. And it keeps me breathing. Because He breathed the breath of the Holy Spirit into the man. And He became a living soul. I became a living soul. He has given me His Word. What happens when we speak things that's not His Word? <laughs> I'll tell you right here in Matthew 15, 11. Go for it. Now that I pass that these out, are, right? These are words written in red as well. It says, says, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Yeah. And there's, there's the power of your life and death in your mouth. That's right. Probably one of the scriptures here. Now, I'm going to look up one of these scriptures. Now, well, let's, since you did that, Dale, that's great, because this is what this is about. Our tongues. First, we talk about anger, then we talk about how to deal with that thing. And we know there's scriptures here that tell us that you can't tame this thing. I'm going to look up Psalms 19.14. As y'all y'all try to find another one of these out there. All right. What does it say? Uh, your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor working deceitfully. The tongue is like a sharp razor. Ouch. All right, Psalms 109, 17 through 19. Okay. He who he loved to curse others, now you curse him. He never blessed others, now don't you bless him. Cursing is a natural to him who, as his clothing or the water he drinks or the rich food he eats, <coughs> now may his curses return and cling to him like, like clothing and may be tied around him like a belt. So his, even the clothing he has is cursed. The scripture I wanted to read was in Psalms 19, 14. It says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about, though. The words of your mouth. Guard your mouth. Who's got another one of these? I have Proverbs 10, 31. Okay. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut out. See, we know when we read the scriptures, there's one scripture that God hates. It says six things. No, seven, right? Haughty look. And it goes on. And I, I, don't, I don't have it all memorized. But it all has to do with being, having too much tongue about yourself. Okay. Who, who's got another one? I have James 1, 19, 20, 21, and 26. Okay. <clears throat> you know this, my beloved brethren, but let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, putting away all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness, receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. And 26 says, If any man think of himself to be righteous, while he bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his heart, this man's religion is in vain. Yes, that's why I went on there. Useless religion. How many people come to church every week, sit on the pew, and they have useless religion? Because they talk about things. That's pretty deep. Yeah, it is. You have useless religion. There's no need to come to church if you're going to come here and talk about it. Unless it's uplifting and building. Amen. Amen. I don't know how the church made it to this day with all the, with all the condemnation that we've heard in the, in the past 20, 30 years. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I don't see it in the Bible talking about condemnation. It talks about God condemning those people. Yeah. Slow to wrath. <clears throat> Wait for His wrath. All right? It'll come. Okay. It's a truth that what comes around goes around. What goes around comes around. It's a truth. But sometimes our patience ain't patient enough to wait on God's wrath. Uh, ain't that true? Yeah, I yeah, know. You're right. You know, we're supposed to be slow to anger. We're, 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 a lot of times we're fast to anger. Well, it's eternal. We're only here for like 80 years. So we have to yeah, you think about it. Yeah, he's got a little more time. No, we have the same time, though. This, it's just a perishable body that's going to be here about 80 years. This perishable must put on incorruption, you know? Right. All right. So we are eternal beings. So 
We better we better get more like Jesus here before we get there. Yeah. Or we might not fit in. You know? Might not get there. Huh? Might not get there. Oh, well, we would. <laughs> we gotta have faith. That's right. Anybody got another one? These are really good. Colossians 4.6 uh, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. I love that scripture too. How many people in here like salt? Yes. And, 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 and just, if you like salt and you eat food that doesn't have it on there, you know. If you talk and you preach and you have got that salt on there, we're going to know. We're going to know. You know? Your salt has lost its saltiness. Yes, the salt has lost its saltiness. It's, and it's good to be thrown under the foot of men and stomped on, it says. That's what it's good for. Who else has got another one? These were, these were really interesting when I started looking them up. Oh. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Did you notice what it says? We always skip that, back, that, that, that latter part of that. That, 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 that if you love it, you'll eat it, which is life <coughs> or death. Mm -hmm. So be careful what you say. That's right. Remember that little, little uh, nursery reminds of, you know, for, for little kids, you know. Be careful what you say. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know it, yeah. Okay. I have Revelation 21 8. All right. I guess the consequences of the time. Yes. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars. Their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. The second death. The fiery lake. I got in trouble preaching that one time. Yeah. Because I, t I told people when hell was going to be done away with. Boy, you talk about you don't believe in hell. Of course I believe in hell. But I believe it will be done away with. That fiery lake's a lot worse than hell. Uh, yeah. Hell is just the absence of God. <clears throat> the fiery lake's is the absence of God with fire. That's right. Alright. I, I saved that one for the last part when you, when, when you read these. You know, you get to the last part. Like you say, Dale. Watch what you say. It's right there, clear as day, that we'll end up in a lake of fire for liars. I've told that to liars before. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't get, they don't sink in. You know? As to me, I don't like lying. I mean, I, I eat myself. I eat little lies. You should not, you shouldn't lie. Okay, what else? Any, any more before we go on? Okay, let's go on. Okay, so. I don't want to miss anything here. You're too fast. So when the Lord spoke to me, begins that you're going too fast through some of this stuff. You know, you spend all this time studying it and then you throw it out there, hey, eat this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not supposed to let corrupt communication, rotten words come out of our mouth. If you can't say something good, what should you say? Nothing. Not at all. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes we want to say things. Oh, yeah. We, we, we read about Jesus. Jesus didn't say anything to those men. He just looked at them and said, Be healed. Right. right? Our words need to be good, agathos, beneficial, pleasant, and excellent, upright, to the use of edifying. And that word use is the chereo, which means an employment. We should have a, one of our jobs that we should have is to edify one another. And the word edify is okadomo, dome, which means to build up. Our tongues need to be ministers of grace. And God's grace, a lot of people have different definitions. I like the definition that I got from Strong's Concordance, which means it's charis, which is a Greek word. It means God's divine influence upon your heart and it's reflection in your life, out into your life. So God's shining in and shining back out, you know. So, we need to be ready at all times to share the gift of God's wonderful grace to hear anyone who has ears to hear. And we are told not to grieve the Holy Spirit, right? So what's right. I hadn't read that one yet. 
Verse 30. This is chapter 4 of Ephesians. And grieve not the, whole, the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed into the day of redemption. So your tongue will grieve the Holy Spirit. That's right. Some churches never grow because we grieve the Holy Spirit. That's right. And that's why a lot of people have left this church is because they didn't grieve <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Yep. And they can't stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's it. It makes them feel bad. Mm -hmm. Or they, or no, it doesn't make them feel bad. It makes them think bad of you. Yeah. You know? Which is actually, it's just something that's within them that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, they don't want to understand because that means that things have to change. Right. And I believe also it's a lack of teaching the Word of God word for word. Amen. Yeah. They leave half of it out. Yes, sir. That word redemption, in my little commentary says it's uh, like paying a ransom. So Christ paid a ransom for us. Yes, yes he, he did. Was. He yeah, did. we paid with a price. It says grieve not. Okay, the word grieve is lupeo, which means to make sorrowful and stress, to be in heaviness. And by God's Spirit, Holy Spirit, we are sealed. Now that word sealed, uh, I'm not going to try to read the Greek word because it's got too many little letters in it. <laughs> But it means to stamp with a signet or a seal to, uh, to keep secret, to seal up. We have God's holy seal upon our hearts. His spirit is our guide, our comforter until the day of redemption. i got a couple of scriptures here. The word redemption, just like James said, means a payment of ransom, full salvation. I'm going to look up two scriptures, and you all can look up them with me, but I'm going to look them up. Hebrews chapter 9. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 11 and 12. 11 and 12? Yeah, Hebrews 9, 11 and 12. I'm going to read it. Okay. Okay? Y'all got it? I got it. But Christ being come, a high priest of good things to come, a high greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So it's really important since He's given us eternal redemption that we shouldn't grieve Him. That's right. And the way we grieve Him is with our tongues. Our yes. We all do it. Mm -hmm. But what I want as a Sunday school teacher and also what God told me is be aware of what's happening to you when you get angry. Stop it. Amen. That's how, that's it. It is. It is that easy. It is that easy. Also, you cast your cares upon the Lord. You know, He He, he knows. He knows us. He knows your problems. He knows if you got a bad temper. And uh, you know, don't ever say you have a bad temper. That's just confessing to the devil that you have a bad temper. <laughs> you know, you gotta don't give place for the devil. Don't let him in your room. That's right. Because he is the accuser. He's telling you you're sick. He's telling you that you're, you're, you're no good. He's telling you every time you do some sin and you know it, you know, you think, well, maybe that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it is the Holy Spirit, but the devil wants you to sin. He, he don't want you to step out of it, you know. Okay. Now, that brings us to oh, one more scripture. Matthew 20. Let's read some words of Jesus here. Matthew 20. Like I said, I, I decided to slow myself down a little bit in this lesson. Chapter 20, and I got me a Bible that's got nice big words. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. Jesus called unto them and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. <coughs> so, we have God's holy seal upon our hearts and until the day of redemption. And He has given us eternal redemption. And He is our ransom. 
He's paid the price for my, my shortcomings of when I can't, when I, when, I don't, when I don't measure up to what I'm preaching. Amen. We don't always measure up to what we preach. In fact, most of the time we preach it to ourselves. Amen. That's true. That's exactly right. That's true. Okay, let's go to verse 31. We're going to run out of time. I'm going to keep going. 